You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Time now is 646 for the next 11 minutes. We'll be bringing you everything you need to know to head out the door this morning. Here's what we are following for you this morning. Dozens of rounds fired at a DeKalb County home overnight, leaving a mom and her two teenagers hurt. We're following this breaking news for you live. State lawmakers looking to get rid of the taxes you pay on guns for a few days every year. Why those who oppose it say the focus is in the wrong place. And we're starting off on the chilly side this morning with temperatures down into the 30s, but we're going to mild up as we head through the afternoon. Got the details for you coming up. And it's a red alert across the top end perimeter with only two left lanes open, 285 eastbound before Roswell Road. Delays growing. We're going to get you around it, though. But first, we want to take you straight to breaking news right now in DeKalb County. Police tell us early this morning a mom and her teenage twins were hurt in a shooting. 11 Lives Ariana Manis is live at DeKalb County Police Headquarters this morning. Ariana, other people were inside the home when this all happened. Yeah, that's right. DeKalb County Police, they spent much of the night and into the morning investigating the scene where multiple rounds were fired inside of the home. Now, this happened just after midnight at a home on Rock Metal Drive in Stone Mountain. The mother and her two twin children, a 13 year old and 13 year old girl and boy, they are at the hospital this morning recovering from non life threatening injuries. They were shot. They are expected to be OK, and we're learning that in total 11 people were inside the home at the time. Police are telling us that someone fired multiple rounds into the home and then fled the scene. We're learning that at least 60 shell casings. We saw that when we were at the scene, 60 shell casing evidence markers were placed inside in front of that home by crime scene investigators. At this point, no one has been arrested and police have not named any suspects as they continue to investigate this shooting. We'll continue to follow this story as it develops and be sure to bring you the latest. Back to you. Ariana, thank you. We are also working to learn more about an investigation in Northwest Atlanta right now. Police were on the scene for hours this morning at what appears to be an apartment complex on Etheridge Drive. Much of the investigation was centered around this white SUV with a window that had been busted out. Glass was on the sidewalk there. We have reached out to police to learn more about what happened. Hours from now, we're going to hear from parents who say their baby was decapitated during delivery at a Clayton County Hospital. During a news conference at 11 this morning, we're going to hear from Jessica Ross and Trevion Taylor Sr. Less than 24 hours ago, the medical examiner ruled their baby's death a homicide. We told you last year the couple filed a lawsuit against Southern Regional Medical Center. Lawyers say the doctor who performed the delivery applied excessive force on the baby's head and neck. They also say health care providers tried to hide what happened. We are following legislation from the state capitol that will impact you and your family. Guns would be cheaper to buy during some parts of the year if a bill becomes law. So it proposes that for five days every October, the state would exempt sales taxes on gun purchases, ammunition and other accessories. So let's say you're getting a new $500 gun, right? You would save about $30 in taxes depending on where you buy it from. Those against it says lawmakers should instead be focused on the proposed tax breaks for diapers, baby formula and feminine products. Are we really putting guns over baby formula and diapers? I think taxes on firearms are an infringement upon our Second Amendment rights. The bill also gives tax breaks to people buying a gun lockbox. The Senate voted to approve the bill and send it to the House for more debate. That was a look at your Wednesday morning headlines. Chesley walking out the door under clear skies this morning. Oh, it's beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful day for us. It is starting off on the chilly side, though, so you're going to need to grab that jacket, at least a light one. Now, I would say the heavy jacket, just so you can bear those temperatures this morning. Now, by the afternoon, you're going to want to open it up or even take it off. So maybe a sweater underneath. You're looking at temperatures in the 30s just about everywhere. Got some 20s out there, especially to the north and then down to the south as well. Peachtree City at 29. 29 degrees also into Conyers, 35 McDonough down toward Locust Grove in southern Henry County, 30 in Noonan. You got 28 degrees Chattahoochee Hills in South Fulton County. 30 degrees Powder Springs, Dallas and Paulding County at 28. 33 degrees in Tipple up in Northern Carroll County. 35 degrees Marietta. You're looking at 38 right now and uh, 39 rather in Tucker. 34 degrees in Roswell, 38 in downtown Atlanta. Yeah, you start off with the jacket to walk the dog this morning because of those temperatures on the chilly side, but we'll be mild it up as we head into the afternoon. Again, 58 degrees will be your afternoon high temperature. Winds out of the east today. Yesterday we had that northerly wind. Now it's coming to us out of the east, so we'll make us a little, a little bit cooler, slightly cooler uh, for today, uh, even with the sunshine around, mostly sunny skies. Notice the clouds back off to the west of us. They're making their way toward us, so yeah, those clouds will start to get in here, but not until later on tonight. 
Uh, going into tomorrow, we'll see those clouds start to increase. That's the way it's been the last couple of days where we have this cool start and then we have the mild conditions during the afternoon. We're going to do it again for tomorrow. I think those temperatures will get back down into the 30s and then we'll mild it up again uh, through the overnight uh, through going into the day on Thursday. Despite the fact that we'll have those clouds, those clouds will keep us from going down into the 30s. Uh, through the overnight going into Friday, but Friday will be warmer as we get more into a southerly flow. It's going to boost our temperature up a little bit there. In fact, we'll continue to go up as we head through the weekend, but we'll also go up as the chance for rain. Unfortunately, with those warmer temperatures, 30% chance for the rain on Friday, 50% chance on Saturday, Sunday up to a 60% chance, and that's going to continue into Monday as we start our work week. Here's how it all plays out. Forecast track model shows the fair skies for this morning and the afternoon. Late clouds will increase. This is where we'll start off on Thursday. Thursday morning, anywhere from partly to mostly sunny skies, but thicker clouds as we head into the afternoon. Rain comes to us on Friday, starting in the far north, and then we'll make its way down to the south uh, as we head through the day. Scattered showers off and on through the day, and that continues as we head into Saturday, but it'll be more widespread during the day on Saturday. Even heavier rain getting in here as we head into the day on Sunday, even to Monday. Got some heavy pockets of rain, a couple rumbles of thunder, certainly not out of the question for us, but not anticipating much in the way of severe weather at this particular time. Extended outlook shows those warmer temperatures well into the six. In fact, 67 degrees for a high on Saturday, but again, we pay for it with the rain. We'll start to see it cool off as the rain begins to taper off by Tuesday of next week. Crash. All right, Chesley, appreciate that. We're going to keep the red alert, but a little bit of good news. We finally have movement. They just pulled away with this wreck. All lanes back open. 285 eastbound right before Roswell Road. That's the good news. The bad news is backed up pretty solid to I-75. A lot of folks were taking 75 to 85 north and popping back up Georgia 400 north. I was even given some surface streets. I travel in this area all the time. I use Acres Mill, Powers Ferry, Herds Ferry, Mount Vernon. I think you're going to be OK. Tack on some extra time. Yeah, 31 minutes from 75 over to 400. But that is slowly recovering. If you're rolling from Spaghetti Junction to 400, you guys are in fine shape. But there you go. 285 East. It's going to be a creep and a crawl from 75 over to Sandy Springs. The only bit of good news is beautiful sunrise. Cheryl. Yeah, sky is pretty there. Crash thanks 653 now. This morning, a man convicted of killing his brother in law is on the run. 11 Alive's Jerry Carnes is live in Midtown with more. So Jerry Melvin Barkley was at the Atlanta Transitional Center, never came back from a work assignment. A big question this morning. Why was a violent offender able to come and go from the facility? Well, good morning, Cheryl. Authorities are acknowledging that Barkley should not have been at a minimum security facility that is typically for inmates who are close to their release date. Instead, the Department of Corrections is saying that Barkley should have been transferred to a maximum security prison after his guilty plea on a charge of voluntary manslaughter. That followed the stabbing death of 23-year-old Tyler Waters in Carrollton. Authorities sent Barkley to the minimum security transitional center based on a prior theft conviction but failed to transfer him to a maximum security facility after his 30 year sentence for voluntary manslaughter. We spoke to the victim's father who said he's afraid Barkley will hurt other members of his family. My kids don't even sleep in their room. They don't want to go to school. My kids just took my bedroom over. My wife sleeps right there and I sit right here all night long with my gun in my hand. Just waiting on him to open my door, step on my porch. Barkley's 30 year sentence came without the possibility of parole. The Department of Corrections is investigating to see what went wrong. Back to you. Jerry, thank you. Right now, Metro Atlanta attorneys say they are on high alert as the cyber attack on Fulton County systems is still causing problems this morning. This cyber attack has impacted court cases and other legal filings. We talked with one attorney who has clients in the Fulton County Jail and says they're terrified. That's a really frightening thing when you're talking about someone locked up in Fulton County Jail, a jail that has a troubled history of working in the best of times. The jail says it's doing as much as possible to operate as normal manually. Officials tell us they do have a backup system, but we know they do not have access right now to booking photos. Continuing your 11 minutes of nonstop news at the state capitol where wholesale distributors and independent craft brewers, well, they're at complete odds. So as it stands, only wholesale distributors can sell beer to restaurants and retailers. They say a change would be detrimental to so many people, but brewers are hoping to change that so they can sell the beer themselves and cut out the middleman. 
Correct. So if I want to sell to a bar in Savannah next door to my brewery, my distributor has to pick it up, drive to Atlanta four hours away, inventory it, and then drive four hours back to Savannah to drop it off at that bar. So it's a waste of resources for the distributor and the brewery. There's employees in every one of your districts that work for a distributor. That's who this affects. It is directly moving money from them and it's detrimental. The debate will be up for a vote in a Senate committee by the end of this month. All new this morning, Atlanta City Council agreed to eliminate parking minimums for some new projects in neighborhoods along the Beltline. The hope is these areas will be more friendly to pedestrians, to cyclists, and people taking public transit. Now, there will be still requirements for restaurant bars and some other businesses in those areas. Officials hope this decision will bring more developers to the area, lower the cost to build, and eventually even keep rent prices down. Remember, the news continues on our 11 Alive app this morning. Download 11 Alive Plus right now to your Roku, Fire, and Apple TV. Well, we're looking at temperatures getting up closer to 50 degrees by noon. We're going to have sunshine around in abundance through the day. In fact, we'll get up to 58 degrees for an afternoon high. Some areas will exceed that. By 6 o'clock, we'll drop back down to 53 degrees with fair skies, but clouds will start to move into the area later on tonight. In fact, we'll see the rain increase as we head through the weekend, folks, getting up to a 50% chance Saturday, Sunday a 60% chance for the rain. All right, the good news is the wreck has cleared 285 eastbound before Roswell Road. The bad news is the memory lingers still very heavy all the way back towards I-75. Just be prepared. Tack on an extra 10, 15 minutes getting over from Cobb County to Sandy Springs. I'll get you an update at 726. All right, a doozy of an end to the rush hour. Stay safe out there, everybody. Just enjoy the sunrise as long as you're stuck <laughs> looking at it, right? We'll leave you with a look at the airport. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning.